Welcome everybody. In this video I'm going to be using CorelDRAW 5 to demonstrate how to make a quick sport style logo um, with some custom type and a quick little effect for a um, kind of surreal or simulated sport ball on top here. Um, some of the things that you might want to note when you're constructing a type font especially if you're doing a stencil font like this one's going to be um, you're going to be taking pieces out of the font. You're either covering up pieces of the font or you're actually cutting pieces out. Now if you're going to do any manipulation to the font um, you'll want to make the effect um, you want to make the effect actual like a real effect. You wouldn't want to just cover up a piece of this with the same color as the background and then when you apply effect it might not work right. So um, to actually cut this type we're going to have to find where the pieces go. Now one quick way to do that is to take, you know, you get your full letter of characters here and you just take a stencil font like shown above and that'll give you an idea or a clue. Now there's a lot of different stencil fonts and there's different ways of cutting the characters up. This one shows, you know, like at the top of the B there would be a slice here. We may want to do that a little different depending on how what works with this kind of boxy font, but you can see this would cut at the top of the E here. Um, sometimes if you stencil in the wrong space, like if I cut this whole A in half right here, um, like like kind of like it's showing there, it would probably make this look like an eye and it wouldn't work. Um, so that's one thing you're going to have to test a little bit. But I'll go ahead and get rid of this and let's go ahead and start to get work now. One good way to cut a stencil on a font like this to make a like a sport looking font, it's pretty popular, is to make little shapes and you're going to kind of blend them. Now I've already done the work here a little bit. I'm just going to go ahead and um, select both of these and then can um, shift page down and you'll see these are actually pieces these are little rectangles I've made already um, that are and you want to go less than the size of the space in between the font um, if you go bigger than that then the font tends to look really clunky or start to fall apart visually or might not read right and I picked these placements based on uh, just some sp popular sport fonts um, and then what you do is you can take all these pieces here, I'll just go outside of the edge here, select them all, um, and then you kind of control L, so you combine them, let me just collect them here, so let me do that one more time here, select them all, and then I'll control L, combines them all, so you can say it's just one curve now instead of a group, and then you hold the shift key, click on the bottom, and then you can use this trim tool. Now depending on the version of CorelDRAW you have, um, you may have to either go up into um, the, the um, uh, program bar to click it. Most of the time in the newer versions they have a they have a trim tool here um, with all the way up to seven as well. Um, and then so you hit trim and you're trimming the piece that you clicked first out of the piece that you clicked second. So that's important to note. Otherwise you may your bears would trim out the pieces from this and then it wouldn't work. But you'd know that right away and you could always control um, control Z to go backwards. Now see so when I click off of this and I'll go into wireframe mode um, which is just Alt V W for the quick key or you go up here view wireframe and you can see how I trimmed that away right and I'll go back um, here and you can see how it was a solid piece and then I knock those pieces out and delete them. So that's a, that's a good way to kind of start. Um, now I gotta kind of create the rest of the design here. So now I have a workable font that's kind of unique um, if you were going to make a whole character set for yourself, um, there's different software that you can use to actually make it into a font at some point. And you can see sometimes you get these clunky little pieces here. Um, you can see I cut out a piece there, and it's pretty easy to just tweak that. You just come in and get rid of any extra nodes that you have. Um, oops, kind of bumped it over here. Let's uh, nudge it or whatever here. Let's hit delete. Um, oops, guess we need all those. I just don't need these. So there you go. Delete those. Um, if you see any other areas, sometimes you'll get a clip here, or you can see there's some extra ones here. You get a little clip there. Just hit delete. Um, that way, the less nodes you have, if you clean it up a little bit, it saves time later on, especially if you're going to do some sort of bevel effect or something. Contour it. You'd see a little bump there if you contoured it. So it's kind of good to do that. Now we're going to move on. We're going to construct kind of that that uh, symbolic uh, football on top here. We're going to assume this is a football team. So we take this. I'm just working in pages just for ease of uh, transition here. So I'm going to go keep this on one page. On page two, I've brought in this kind of clip art 
slash football that I kind of modified. I covered up the logo here because I just wanted to use the football to reference the, the pieces in the football. Now, how do you make a quick symbolic football? Well, since it's college football and it's not, uh, um, or it's high school, college, you want to use the footballs that are appropriate to that, you know, with the stripe. Um, and then the stitching here, um, I'll go ahead and go to wireframe to show you how we, I created these pieces. So I just kind of zoomed in and I created pieces that would were just referenced on the ball itself. You can kind of see how those fit on here. They kind of create the stripe here. Um, so I just kind of clicked on those and just kind of sketched them out. So you need just enough to symbolize the top part of that football. And I'll go ahead and get rid of this um, image in the background and then I'll go back to my my design here. So you can see I just created these pieces and all I really did was I created these stitching in one shot um, and then I created these pieces here, these three, and then just flipped them. You know, hold the control key down, have when they're all selected, flip them over, move them over, and then you've got a nice symmetrical piece here that'll start to work. And if I go back to my first page where I got this font, I can take these two pieces, I can copy those, control C, and go back here, and then control V, and then just kind of move it down, and then I'll shift page down, page it below the design. And you can see as things are starting to kind of line up a little bit. I'll move this until it's sized a little bit more appropriately. It seems a little bit too rounded, so I squish it, just bring it down. And that kind of gives you that symbolic, um, popular uh, football look here. Now, we're not going to stop just there. We're going to do a little effect on this thing before we wrap it up. And then we'll actually put it on a t-shirt where we would show it to, uh, we'd show it to the coach or whoever. I'm going to group them together. And then I'll copy them again because I'm just transitioning through the pages here. I'm going to put them down here on this next page. Now on this page, I'm going to put a little effect in this Bears portion, and I'm going to drop a football, just the name football below it, um, just in case people are confused. <laughs> they don't know what that uh, top image is above it, Bears. We'll make sure they know it's a football. So we'll put football down here. We want kind of a blocky font, so we'll just use a varsity font like this, bring it in, and then... I like to uh, keep it a little smaller here. We'll spread it out like this, which always gives it kind of a that team sport look. And we'll make it red like the top. Um, so that kind of matches there. Make sure the colors match. Save the file. Control S, always good to do in case you mess things up. And then once you're done saving the file, um, we can kind of put the, our little effect on here. Now what I'm going to do with this little effect, I'm going to make a little jersey knockout pattern. So what I'm doing is I'm going to make a little rectangle. See how it's kind of a little taller than it is square? And I'm going to round the edges. So I hit the shape tool after creating my rectangle. And I just bump the edges a little bit. Now if I zoom in a little bit, you could probably see that a little better. But essentially what I did was I took it from square to just here. Using the shape tool, you just kind of pull the edges. And when it's still a rectangle, It'll uh, make all the edges round like that. And that's kind of a pill shape. And that's what we want to create this. I'm going to zoom, I'm going to move up just a little bit so I got some room. And then I move this over. And you want a distance uh, about three times the, where the, um, the other shape was. And I right click. So I drag it over, holding the shift key down. And then I right click and that plus sign forms and I create another one. Now I can just hit the control D key and just duplicate it all the way across. I'm just going to go for a while. I'm going to hold it down. And then I'll zoom out, kind of see where I was at. You kind of see I went way over here. We can get these other stuff off the screen here, delete those. And now I grab them all. I'm going to group them. Um, and I'm going to just grab that top corner here because I want to shrink them down so they fit on the page. And then I'll zoom back in here. And I've kind of created my, started to create my mesh pattern here. And then when I click them, I'm going to drag them down. Make sure they're more than, definitely more than a whole length away. So in other words, duplicate it once again and then one more time. And then I right click and then I can control D. I'll go about five, six times. I'm going to grab all these. I'm going to group them. And you notice I didn't grab this below it because uh, this is grouped together. So I can get away with that. And then I'm going to control D and then I'm going to hold the shift key and I'm going to nudge this down like three or four until it's centered. And then I'm going to go over twice. And you see how that's kind of, and then I just nudge it like three, and then I took the shift key off, so it's not a super nudge, and it's only a half nudge, and I nudged it over once. Now I'm going to grab all these, I'm going to group them, and I'm going to shrink them just a little bit, and then I'm going to assume I'm going to go on a dark shirt, so I'm going to probably go 
you know, depending on the color of the shirt, um, I'm just going to put something in here so we can we can see the difference. So I click on the fill with the left click, and then I right click on nothing. So make sure I knock out my my uh, outline off of this. Put it in f over the bears. You can see how it's kind of overlap, and that's kind of a cool look. Now I can adjust it here. If I want bigger mesh on these, I would enlarge it. If I want smaller mesh, I would go here. I might want even just a tiny bit smaller, just so I get more like more rows of mesh. And if I don't have enough, see how this is kind of falling off on top? Maybe I want a, a little clip to that. I can kind of manually adjust that. You know, push them up, push them down a little bit. If I do it too much, it'll take them off of that vertical shape, which I don't want. But I, this way I can kind of center it to where I want. You can see I got the bottom edge there, I got the top edge there. That's pretty good. So then I'm going to go ahead and put this down to the bottom. So I'm going to go shift, page down, and then I'm going to go ahead and eff uh, effects power clip. Now depending on your version of CorelDRAW, you may have that in a different place, but you can go ahead and click that and put the effect in there. Um, and so now you have that kind of mesh fill there, which is kind of cool. Oh, and now since it's grouped, now here, see this is a little, a little hiccup here. See how it kind of also went into the football and I might not want it up there. So I can just control Z twice and then make sure I ungroup my pieces right before I do this. And then here and now I'll go down to the bottom again, page down. And that's just a little thing that can happen. You forget to ungroup your your stuff. Not a big deal, but uh, it's good to know like, oh, that doesn't look right. Like I don't want maybe you would want the mesh up there, maybe you wouldn't, depends. Um, you know, sometimes if you had put a mesh fill on this one, though, it might actually break the letters too much, and you might lose it. So sometimes on little letters or little pieces, you don't want to put that effect in there. So I zoom out, just kind of take a look at it. Looks good. Now I'm going to put this on a shirt, so I control C again. Now normally you might work all on the same page. Sometimes it's nice to work on multiple pages just so that you have different versions of the design or different phases in the construction. Um, it can be useful. And I control um, V, kind of put it on the shirt here, kind of see what's going on. Place it up here. Now this is my shirt. This is actually a vector version of a shirt. Now what's useful about this vector version, you'll see in a minute, um, I kind of want this to be like kind of a deep gray, gray color, but I want that mesh actually to be uh, black, knocked out. So I'm going to click on it and then I'm going to hold the control key down and then I'm going to click in. And that allows me to go into the power clip without going up into effects, edit power clip, and all that. It's just kind of a quickie. Click on this. Let's go ahead and make it black. And then I'll click out. Let's see, and then I can kind of have that. Now, if that, here's a little trick too. If that, if that mesh doesn't look big enough, like it's not knocking out enough of an area um, in your design, what you can do um, is you can uh, actually increase it a little bit by putting an outline on it. So you can click in here click here and then actually put an outline around it. You see how that made it thicker? I just right clicked and put a, uh, you can see right here, half point outline on it and then I right click out and now it's a little bit bigger. Um, takes up a little bit more space so it looks a little bit cooler. Um, and one thing you can do as well um, that I like to do is if you scan or bring in a screen capture of, uh, you know, from a shirt brand that you like, you can leave that below. You, obviously, you're not going to show that to the customer, but that's useful because if I want to change this color shirt background, I can just use the eyedropper tool and I can grab one of these RGB colors for this shirt color. Say I want to use blue dusk instead, and then I take my shirt color and I make it blue dusk. You know, and obviously, only that wouldn't work with my graphics here, but I can make those orange. And you see, you can quickly, and then I just make my outlines here black, and then you can kind of quickly change the color of the shirt. To, uh, to work with that. So that's that's a really useful thing to do, just kind of screen capture a, a real quick uh, colors that are available in the shirt kind that you're using. This is, a, I think this one's for uh, Gildan shirts. Um, so that'll allow you to quickly eyedropper in different shirt colors so you get the right color and then you send it off to your client and you're, uh, you're good to go. So that's a stencil with a mesh pattern fill. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. One thing to check out is my screen printing artist site. Real soon, what I'm going to be doing is uh, you're going to see I'm going to be doing boot camps. And I call them the 0 to 60 boot camps. So Corel Draw, 0 to 60 boot camps. Um, so check those out. Those are going to be coming up real soon. I wanted to get them done um, originally by March, but we're into April now. But uh, I look forward to seeing as many people as I can that I uh, can help uh, learn how to do screen print designs. So thank you very much, and have a great day.